Good morning, TFBC. Please stand up. In 1 John 4, 8, it says, Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And then in Galatians 3, Paul says, In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. This song is called Child of Love. Oh, 
Pastor Mike. Hey, good morning, you guys. You go, ahead, go ahead and have a seat. We just want to extend a warm welcome to you. We're so excited that you're here to worship Jesus with us at TFPC. My name is Mike, and it's my pleasure to serve here as a pastor. And we are a neighborhood church where anyone and everyone can take a next step towards Jesus. We want to be a spiritual home for you, a place to belong, to be accepted, to be brought into and up the heart of our Heavenly Father through the finished work of His Son, Jesus. We want to be a place for you to develop, figure out who you are, how God created you, how He wired you, what skills you have, so that you can serve with us on His big mission. God is on His mission. He's been on His mission before the foundation of the world to reveal Himself to humanity. He has redeemed you to get in the game with Him, to help Him, to be alongside Him as He reveals Himself. Hey, if this is your first time with us, or your first time in a long time, we're especially excited that you're here worshiping with us. Here's what to expect. Today we have a fun day today. We have some kids in the room. TFBC Elementary is in the room with us. We're having back to school Sunday. Yeah, give it up for them. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit more in a second. And right after they're done and we do our back to school stuff, promoting kids to different age groups. There'll be a video on the screen letting you know about some things that are happening in the life of our church that you can get plugged into, that you can find a spiritual family. And then today we're wrapping up our series, Follow God. So we've been talking about this series through the book of 1 Samuel that, and acknowledging that we have lots of voices, lots of people, lots of storylines, lots of agendas that are pushing on us, trying to get us, trying to put us in their track, align us in the way they want us to go. But all along, God's voice is there. And through 1 Samuel, we've been trying to attune our ear to God's voice, that we can be equipped, empowered to follow the design that God has for us in all life. So I'm excited to wrap that series up today. Hey, we'd love to connect with you. If you're a guest today, uh, as you walked in, everybody got these listening guides. Hold on to that. We're going to get into that in our Bible study through 1 Samuel. But on the bottom there, if you would just rip that off and throw it off, uh, meet us at the east entry, or throw it into the, if you want a gift, free cup of coffee to perk. Meet us at the East Entry. There's somebody there who can take that, give you a free cup of coffee over at Perk, a, a gift certificate to a free cup of coffee at Perk. They don't just have coffee that's been chilling over there. And then um, also, we want to pray for you. So if you have anything going in your life that you need help with, that you need somebody to walk alongside you, every staff meeting, our staff, our pastors, we're praying over all these cards by name. We're lifting your life up to our Heavenly Father. So whatever that may be, rip that off, throw it in there. We love to pray along side you. Well, like I said, it's back to school Sunday today, and today we're just celebrating that we're getting back into the school year. We're celebrating the kids, our kids' ministry. I'm so grateful, by the way. One of the, the best things about being a part of our church is being alongside you and getting to work alongside other people who are called by God, who are gifted, who are passionate about what they do. So I'm so grateful for Hannah Adams, who leads our preschool ministry, for Megan Adams. Hold up. Oh, yeah, give it for Hannah. I'm so grateful for Megan Adams that leads our elementary ministry. I'm so grateful for Dan and his, Dan Willie and his team that leads our student ministry. They, they love God. They love your students. They are working hard to help your students know Jesus and to equip our parents and grandparents to help you guys equip your students. So I'm so grateful to, to work alongside them. And so today we have a, a bunch of kids that are moving up, some of them from kindergarten to first grade. They're joining our elementary ministry. Yeah. I'm going to read some names up, and then we have a gift for them. Then we have some students who are moving from elementary to middle school, and then a student is moving from middle school to high school. So I'm going to read a, a big list of names, and why don't we hold our applause to the end. So these students are moving up from K-5 to first grade into our elementary ministry. Aliana Asante, you, co- you guys can come up and grab your gift if you're here. Some of the students may not be here today. Ariana Asante, Messiah Caldwell, Sophie Decree, Matthew Embick, Jake Glover, Henry Knight, the fourth, I think. Left that off. Got to put that on there. Josmel Levia, Malia Levi, Tyler Lucas, and Luke Musal. So give it up for our, our new elementary students. Yeah. We have two students that are moving up from elementary to middle school. Condor Condolucci and then Everson Racinos. We have a gift for you guys, and then Caroline Condolucci is moving up from middle school to high school. So give it up for our students that are making transfers, yeah. So I want to take a moment to pray over our students, but also want to pray over, we have many of our TFBCers that are teachers, that are administrators, that are staff 
at all kinds of schools, public school, private school, all kinds of schools all over the area. So if you work at a school, teacher, administrator, what, some kind of role at one of our neighborhood schools, would you mind standing up so just so we could see you and, and commit to praying for you? That's, that's all. You're, we're not going to call your name out. I know we have teachers. Yeah, give it up for our teachers. Let's take a moment. Let's pray over our students. Let's pray over our teachers and dedicate this moment that we have to Jesus. And then right after our service today, we're going to have some popsicles outside at our guest area. We'd love for you guys to stop by. Even if you don't have kids or grandkids, stop by, hang out, get a popsicle. Let's pray. God, we love you. We're grateful that you love us. We're so grateful to be a multi-generational, multicultural church, God, a church in two languages and a church made up of every generation. And it's so beautiful to see our elementary kids in here today, God, and the, the joy they have and that they have next steps, next steps for you to take. And God, we're so grateful for our students and how they're growing and how you're guiding them. And we're so grateful for our teachers and staff at our schools, God, that are light into the community that are pouring into the next generation in our neighborhood. And God, we pray that you give them wisdom. We pray that you give them encouragement. We pray that you give them strength. And Jesus, help us to be a spiritual family, a real family that comes alongside every, each one of our generations and that makes relationships and that bears each other's burdens and that uh, helps each other in our successes and helps each other in our lows. We're grateful for today that we can be a family and connect with you here today. And it's your name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. So say goodbye to the kids, everybody, and check out the screen for our video. Good morning, TFBC, and welcome to church. We are excited to be able to worship together this Sunday morning, and we're especially excited if this is your first time joining us, or maybe your first time in a long time joining us. As Pastor Mike just mentioned, we would love to be able to connect with you through our sermon listening guide. Also on the front of our sermon listening guide, you will also be able to find our social media handles. You can quickly go ahead and pull out your phone right now and you can follow us on social media. Our Instagram page is at GoTFBC and our Facebook page is at Tequesta's First Baptist Church. As the fall is quickly rolling around, this is going to help you stay in the know and engage with everything that is happening here at our church. TFBC, we are also extremely grateful for your sacrificial giving because it funds 100% of everything that happens here at our church and it keeps the mission of TFBC on the move to reach anyone into a growing relationship with Jesus and take next steps in Him. You can give through our website, which is tequestaschurch.net by clicking the Give tab at the top of the homepage there on our website, or you can also give in person through either of the two offering boxes that we have located at both the east and west entrances of our church building. Coming up this Tuesday on August 15th, our Grief Share group is going to start meeting again. This meeting on August 15th is specifically dealing with the loss of a spouse. And then from August 22nd and on, Grief Share will be having normal meetings. This group meets on our church campus from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. and it's led by our care and counseling pastor, Kieran Sharp. It's an awesome group where you can find hope and healing through Jesus after the death of a loved one. We have these flyers that look just like this located at either entrance of our church building. As you're headed out, you can pick one of those up and see more about what that Grief Share group looks like. Also, one more quick announcement. We're going to be having a small group leader meeting happening on Sunday, August 20th, directly after church at noon. This is going to be happening in the Fellowship Center and lunch is provided. This meeting is specifically for our small group leaders and spouses are welcome to join as well. TFBC, again, we are grateful to be able to worship together. Let's stand up and let's continue to worship this morning. It's great seeing all those kids. I've got four kids in this church and my prayer is that 20 years from now, they'll be leading like Wooly's kids and the Runnels kids and Malusi's kids. And it's just really encouraging to be in a church where the generation behind is keeping going. I'm thankful for that. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither, neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I'm looking forward to Mike's sermon today because I think this song fits it perfectly. How many of us have been placed in or put ourselves in a place where we've had nowhere to turn but to God? 
I'm there right now again. Uh, and this song is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. We've heard it before, but our culture says, Turn your eyes upon Facebook. <laughs> or turn your eyes to the cable news channel. Or even turn your eyes on your own self and solve all your problems. <laughs> right? That's what we're up against. So I don't know about you guys, but in the times where I've been down and out, what my soul could not live without, what lifted up my spirit above the brokenness of this human realm was the presence of God. And this song speaks to that. So sing along, please. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the same. Life more abundant and free through death into life everlasting. He passed and we follow him there for us sin no
for us to be someone that we can look to, that we can turn our eyes to you. And so, God, we, we pray this morning that we would cast our cares on you, God, that our hearts and our minds would be open to your word and that you would speak powerfully through Pastor Mike. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, at TPC, we're all in for the next generation, and we believe that God wants to do above and beyond what we can think or imagine in the lives of our next generation with our kids and students, and God wants them to join him on his big mission. Remember, our faith, Christianity, it's not genetic. It's not inherited. Jude, the brother of Jesus, says that the faith which was once handed down from the saints, faith, next steps in Jesus, is passed from one generation to the next. And right now, the baton is in our hand. And will you join us? Will you join us in helping hand down the baton of faith to the next generation? God is blessing our church. Last week, we had about 15 people, including kids and uh, adults at our first step. God's adding to our church. And really, the only thing that's holding us back from continuing to grow is having volunteer teams, having leaders in kids ministry and preschool ministry and student ministry. So will you join us today in playing some kind of role, helping kids and preschoolers and students figure out what their next steps are in Jesus, helping them have another adult to process faith with, helping us train the next generation of leaders for business, for the marketplace, and for the neighborhood church. God has eternal blessings awaiting you and for those right now who are investing in our next generation. So we have cards out front. We'd love for you to pray about joining us, being a part of our team to hand off faith to the next generation. Hey, before we jump into, because we're neighborhood church, just, we love to celebrate with our family, especially our staff, staff family. And uh, last weekend, Noah Adams, who is our communication director, he's always on the screen, and Carly, who is right here playing bass, they got engaged, and I'm super happy for them. And they had no idea that I was going to say that. So, uh, hey, when you see them, tell them congratulations. It's really awesome, like Henry said, to have uh, people grow up here and fall in love and serve Jesus together here. All right, here we go. Grab, grab your listening guide. Follow God. We're wrapping up this series. Next week, we're going to start a new series called Faith Meets Life. We're going to walk through a Bible study through the book of James for about six weeks. So I'm excited to do that with you guys. But today, let's follow God. So many voices out there, so many things trying to get to you. And if we're honest, in the moment of struggle and trial, of insecurity, difficulty. We all have our favorite voices that we go to to comfort us, to strengthen us. We all have our security blankets, the the things that we go to in the moments when we feel the pressure from our life. And today we're going to read about a story of David that's always really intrigued me, and I'm excited to actually get to preach a message on it. So turn with me, fire up your Bible app, book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. Chapter 30, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read that, then we're going to jump right in. Remember, we say it mostly every week. These are the words of God. These are not my words. These are not TFBC's words. These are God-breathed, God's vision and dream, his design. God wrote you a book. He revealed himself to you in this book. And so as we read this, let's approach it and hear it as it is our creator speaking directly to our hearts. So we've been going through 1 Samuel. You guys know the arc of the story probably, or at least if you've been here, you've heard it. Saul's a bad king. God kind of says, hey, you're done. God anoints through the prophet Samuel, young David as king. But it's a, a really up and down journey in David's life. Saul's trying to kill him. 
he's running from Saul. And we meet David at what may be his lowest moment in these verses. 1 Samuel 30, 1 through 6. It says, Now when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid against the Negev and against Ziklag. That's the city they were staying in. They overcame that city, Ziklag, and burned it with fire and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. That's all David's men's families. They killed no one, but carried them off and went their way. And when David came and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives also have been taken. There's his wives' names there. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters. Here's the sentence right here for today. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Have you ever been in a situation like this where Murphy's Law is in full force? You know, everything that could go wrong does go wrong. You know, for me, it's usually like stuff breaking in my house. Like it comes in bundles, it comes in waves. Like uh, just this, I think this year, like our dishwasher, done. Washing machine, done. And then for whatever reason, like one side of our kitchen sink, about every year it starts to leak. I don't know why. Like I fix it, a year later it starts to leak. It inevitably happens after about three other things that messed up in our house. I'll go to like grab a trash bag and I'll touch the trash bag from under the sink and it feels wet. And I look at Natalie and like, Natalie, I swear if this thing is leaking, and I'm serious, like if this thing is leaking, we're moving. I'm done. Like I, we're putting the house on the market. Like I'm, no, I can't do anything else. I'm sick of it. And in a way, in a more serious way, that's where David is. He's been running for his life. He's had to abandon actually living in Israel. He's living in enemy territory with the Philistines. And this is a crazy story if you read it. He actually pretends to be insane so that the king, one of the leaders of, of the Philistines, doesn't like suspicious of him and lets him stay there. And so even though... David has been anointed by the prophet of God, anointed by God to be the next king of Israel. Even though David has been exceedingly loyal to Saul at every turn and helped Saul personally benefit and Saul's kingdom grow. And even though he's been wildly successful Bad thing after bad thing after bad thing. Dark time after dark time washed over the shore of his life, battering him, beating him down, separating him from any and all support systems that he would have. And now in this moment, he's alone. His family, by the way, I just want to say this. The Bible here is prescriptive and descriptive. You should have one wife. That's God's design. Prescriptive, not descriptive. Just want to say that. But he's been battered alone. His family, all of his earthly possessions are gone. They're taken. There are literally zero people in his corner. The only people, the only guys that were in his corner before, now, They want to kill him. The text literally means in Hebrew, put a coat of stones on him. Literally, like, just pelt him with stones. His body is covered. Everyone in his life had abandoned him. But verse 6, David strengthened himself, and the Lord 
his God. And this is the finishing touch on this Follow God series. This idea, I pray, God, above all else, lodges deep within your heart. Here's the main idea on your listening guide. Following God provides the only source of strength to meet all of your moments. Following God, following God's voice, following his design, it's the only source of strength that will be available and sustain you in every one of your moments. Whether it's a great moment, whether it's a middle-of-the-road moment, everyday moment, or maybe it's a moment so low, low that you can't scrape yourself off the floor like David here. Following God, hearing him, putting his voice into play in your life is the only source of strength for your moment. We've all had moments, right? I've disappointed some people. I've had people mad at me, thankfully not to the extent that they wanted to stone me. Pretty close, though. And we've all been in this moment where it just feels like life and everything in the world is out to get you. It's out for you. That's our first truth. Life has a way of depleting you. Life has a way, as you live your life, it has a way to deplete the strength that you inherently have. Everyday life, everyday relationships, everyday school, everyday friendships, everyday marriage, everyday parenting, it depletes you, right? I mean, like, am I the only one here? I mean, you just, if you do more than get out of bed, you're going to get depleted. If you love someone, you're going to get depleted. If you lead anything, you're going to be depleted. Your strength, your will, your spirit, it will be depleted. Life has a way of depleting us. That's, in fact, it's from the fall. God said it to Adam and Eve, like work will be hard. Eve, family will be hard. When Adam and Eve went against God's design, life became difficult and hard, the brokenness that invaded our world through sin. And many times it feels like there's all these leeches or like hoses all over us and everyone around us is just sucking the life out of us. Like, oh my gosh, like I have nothing else to give. People are just taking and taking and taking from me. And we all have these moments like David where it feels like, I say feels like because it's not reality, it feels like we are utterly alone. David had no one. And the truth was, there was no human that could come give him comfort, security, encouragement. There was no vacation. There was no book. There was no TED Talk. There was no tonic. There was nothing. Nothing. But God could provide the strength that he needed in this moment. I mean, you read through the Psalms. Henry read one. I mean, there's Psalm 22, a very famous psalm that is a prophetic psalm about how Jesus would feel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? David calls out to God. We've all, I've felt that way. And in that moment, we feel afraid, we feel lost. The voices that we used to count on have dropped us like we're hot. As soon as the tables turn and David became unsuccessful and it cost these guys something, they were ready to wipe him off the face of the earth. And so where do you turn? Where do you go? What voice do you listen to? Where do you find yourself trying to scrounge to find comfort and security? And that's our next truth, our second truth in your listening guide. We find the strength that we need in God and his covenant with us. You find the strength that you need for these moments in God and the covenant that he has made with you if you are in Christ. David's life was a lot like ours. It didn't go, I'm sure, as he expected. 
But at every turn, whether it was an integral move or just a normal Monday moment, David, you can see through the book of 1 Samuel, he's always appealing to and leaning on and living through his faith in God. And the perspective that God gave him that he was a role player in God's bigger story. When Dan spoke about a month ago, David fights this massive dude, Goliath. And David appeals to God's honor and God's strength. When David, as, as we talked about a few weeks ago, when he has this opportunity to take revenge on Saul multiple times, he appeals to God's power and God's calling on his life. It seemed like he had nothing left. It seemed like he had nothing to live for. But David knew that he did. His relationship with God and the promise that God had made to him through the prophet Samuel. And David knew that that promise that God had made, that he would be the next king, that it had not fallen by the wayside and died. And David, like us, like me, he needed strength. He needed strength, as one author said, to think straight. He needed strength from God to have hope. He needed strength from God to make wise decisions. He needed strength even to call out to God. He needed strength to crawl out of bed. And in that moment, David knew to turn to the only source that exists for strength for the moments that we face in life, God and the covenant, the promises that God has made with us. God is a God of covenant. And a covenant is is different than the way that we think about promises. A covenant is a binding promise. You see, our culture operates on different standards. We say things like, it's just business, right? It's not personal, like, it's just business, which means, like, it's totally appropriate for someone to, like, box you out of the market and take away your livelihood if it helps their bottom line. Like, hey, hey so I know you lost your job and your house. and your, it, it, Don't take it personal. It's just business, right? That's our culture. Or another filter that we use is a question, is it legal? Like, I don't really care if it's moral. I don't really care if I lie. Like, but is it legal? Like, am I get sued? Like, I don't know. Like, that's our culture. But God's culture is a covenant, a binding promise all throughout human history, God has made covenants and promises with people. He promised with, uh, made a covenant with Noah that he would never flood the whole earth. He made a covenant with Abraham that he would set his family apart. Israel would become a country that he would treat him especially. He made a covenant with David, a binding promise, something unbreakable. Because unlike you and me and every other person that exists, God never God never goes back on his word. God can't lie because God, when he makes a covenant, he bases it on himself, the greatest thing that exists. And God can't go against himself. And so David knew, no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what it appears like I'm facing, no matter how much pain I'm in, no matter how alone I feel, no matter how much darkness is out there, God's word that came to him through Samuel would not fail. God didn't anoint him as king to let him die alone in enemy territory. God didn't empower David to slay Goliath to be taken over by a mob of nobodies. God didn't give him victory time and time again against the Philistines and save his life over and over again from Saul to now just let him sputter out and die. God made a promise. God made a covenant. And God always, always keeps his promises. And when we're in these moments, God's covenant, his promise to us, it's like water to parched grounds. It's like honey to lips who have not eaten. And so today, we have to ask ourselves a really difficult question. What are we counting on 
for strength? What are the voices, what are the things that we go to to give us comfort, to give us security, to let us know it's going to be okay? What are we leaning on? And the truth is, God has promised today that nothing, nothing can separate you from his love. God has given you his very best, his very son. God has promised that one day he will right every wrong in your life. God knows the hairs on your head. God promised through Jesus that as he takes care of the nasty little animals that are outside, he's going to, would he not take care of you? Paul said this, 2 Corinthians 1.20 for all the promises of God find their yes in him, Jesus. That is why through him we utter amen to the glory, to God for his glory. It is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. And listen to this. And has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Right? David had a special covenant with God. He would be king. Later God would come to him again and make another covenant that one of his ancestors would sit on the throne of Israel forever. While you're not going to be a king of Israel or queen of Israel, in Christ, God has made a better covenant with you. Last week, like we do every first Sunday, we take the Lord's Supper. We take communion together. And it's a reminder of what Jesus said to his disciples. He said, I am forging a new covenant, a binding promise with you, with my very blood. That is, as Paul said, also sealed, confirmed, guaranteed with the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead himself. So God has promised you, if you repent and believe, that yes, he will forgive your sins. Yes, he will infuse you with God's goodness. Yes, he will adopt you into his family and graft you into his people. But nothing in the universe can cause or damage the promise that Jesus paid for with his blood that is guaranteed right now with the Holy Spirit of God. God has made a better covenant with you and me. And that's why when Paul was alone, like David, 2 Timothy 4, 17, Paul said, when everybody else left, Paul said, the Lord stood by me and strengthened me. And so today, I need to preach to myself. You need to preach to yourself that God has made a covenant with you, an unbreakable promise in Christ, that all of his promises to his people are a yes and amen in Christ. We need to surround ourselves with the voices that are going to pour God's truth into us. That's why being part of a spiritual family at church is so important. We need to hear God's word. These words are his promises, literally God's breath that breathes his promises over and over and over again into our heart. God's thoughts and dreams over our downcast souls, over our downcast heart. And when we do when we listen to God's promises, even when the scoreboard and the dashboard of our life looks different and we're depleted over and over again by life, our last truth comes to fruition. God's strength comforts and equips you for God's design. God's strength through him and through the reality of his promises, it strengthens you to live out the life that God has called you to. We won't read the verses, but in this moment, David is comforted by God. He gets up off the ground. He stops weeping. He gets supernatural strength from God and his promise. He goes and he inquires of God to ask God, like, should we chase down these people that wiped out our village and it took our families? And God says, yes. So David gets up. He hypes up his men. They roll out. They go come upon the Amalekites who are partying with all their stuff. They haven't harmed their women, their, their families. And so they defeat them. They get their kids back. David gets the plunder. He gives it to the leaders of the tribe of Judah. And a few months later, those tribes, tribal leaders anoint him as king 
of Judah. Both David and Paul knew that their provision from God in the moment, their darkest moments of strength, it wasn't just for them. It was for them to live God's design, and when they did, that impacted everyone around them. The truth is, the life that God has for you, God's design for your life, it's not rocket science. It doesn't require, like, dark magic. Having a great marriage, having a great family, managing, like, work-life tension, trying to find a spouse, school. It, it's not rocket science, but it's exceedingly difficult, and actually it takes more than you've got. But the truth is, God is here. His power is available. His strength is available as, as we find strength in him, as we preach to ourselves and find those promises in, in him, as we hand over our battles to him, as we talked about last week, as we yield all that we have to be part of his story. God powers us to live in the moment that we find ourselves in right now, whatever that is. And God powers us as the beneficiaries of the covenant of God to be faithful in the covenants that we've made before God. God wants us to keep our covenants and live according to his design. The truth is God kept his covenant even to the perceived detriment of his son, Jesus, right? To death on the cross. And having God's covenant is the only thing that can sustain us and guide us when the other people around us are not reciprocating. Hey, when our husband or wife isn't holding up their end of the agreement, we can follow God's design because it's not 50-50, it's, it's 100% un, unto Christ because we actually don't need anybody else or anything else giving us. We have Christ infusing us with strength. Man, at school and work, which by the way, it just feels like in our area, everybody's just trying to walk around with their head on a swivel, trying to, to find the most popular person or try to talk to the person that's going to give them the most benefit in their personal life and their agenda. We can be secure in who we are because God has made a covenant with us. We can also sacrifice all that we have, put all the chips on the table for the salvation of our neighborhood, for reaching our next generation, to birth new churches in Hope Sound, to create a place of Christian education here because no matter how the wind blows, no matter what smoke comes in, no matter who comes in and out of our life, this is the reality, that the covenant-keeping God has made a binding promise to you personally that's based on his body and blood and sealed with the spirit of the living God. And so God is calling us in these everyday moments of life where we're depleted, where we just, we got nothing left to behold his beauty, to behold his holiness, to value him as the treasure of the universe, and to allow those promises that are yes and amen in Christ to power us in the moment that we're in. And in his kindness, he uses moments like these that we've all had in our life or that we're going to have soon that feel dark and that feel depleting to wean us off of other comforts, lesser voices, so we find the, the true source of strength. And so, so these last eight weeks, I pray for myself that I will hear, I will search out, that we together can follow God's voice. Because his voice is the only voice. This covenant-keeping God who has made an eternal promise to you, paid for with the very life of his son, guaranteed by the third person of the Trinity. He's going to give you what you need to follow his design. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you love us and that you, you always keep your word. 
God, all these promises are based on you. You told us through the author of Hebrew that you're the same yesterday and forever. You never change. Not one of your promises has fallen to the ground. And Jesus, the proof that your promises will come true were, were your, your, was your resurrection. That in your resurrection, the fir, you were the first fruits of God's finished work. And because you're raised from the dead, we know that that same power that raised you from the dead is available to us right now. God, help us to bank our life on your death, burial, and resurrection. Help the, resur- the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, help that not to just to be something we assent to, think something that we check off, but God, make it our lifeblood in our marriages, at our schools, in our relationships. God, help us to see how dependent we are on you. And God, we're thankful that no matter what we feel, no matter what's done to us, no matter what the news says, no matter who's in the White House, no matter what our bank account says, no matter who thinks we're cool or or popular, you have made a promise to us. God, you have forged a new covenant. And God, you will never leave us or forsake us. Jesus, help us to be the people that you died and were raised from the dead to be. And it's your name we pray. Amen. Would you stand and worship with us?
Dear Father God, thank you for your many promises and that you are faithful to those promises, Lord. I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your covenant. Lord, I thank you that you are there for people who are weary, people who are troubled. Help us turn our eyes off to the world, Lord, and on to you. Help us you know, be a light. This world is dying. Help us be the design that you created us to be. Lord, quiet our fears and help us just hear you and then go do what you want us to do, Lord. I thank you for all the things you do, and I ask this in your precious son's name, Jesus, and all God's people said, amen. amen. TFBC, you are dismissed. Never